Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of just grating ginger. Not terribly complicated, but you know, sometimes it helps to see these things. So I've got my piece of ginger here. This is um, you know, a little bit more than an inch uh, long, but that's just because the shape I wanted, I decided to make it a little bit longer. But you, a lot of times when we use ginger, I'll tell you to use about an inch's worth. Uh, the nice thing about this piece is it doesn't have a whole lot of these little knobbies coming off of it, because that can make it tricky for peeling. And I'm probably actually gonna end up pretty much cutting them off as I go, which is a little bit of a waste, but they're just so tricky to peel around that it's kind of not worth it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom off and then I'm gonna use this knife. Now, I am going to peel towards myself and I'm gonna do it very, very, very gently with this knife, okay? So if you're gonna work with a knife towards you, which you know there are those who will say never, ever, ever, ever do that because it's not safe. I oddly feel like I have more control when I do it that way, so I do. However, you could work where you put the put the ginger down and you could kind of try and do it like that. I just don't feel like I have that much control. So, this is realistic. This is how I do it in my own kitchen. I'm gonna pick it up from this end that I already cut off. I'm just gonna slowly bring it towards me and just kind of peel it off. So you can see, as I'm working up, I'm peeling it off. You see I'm going slow and steady so that knife doesn't slip and come barreling into my finger. I'm not gonna say it hasn't happened a time or two, but if you're slow and steady, and you're careful about how much pressure you're putting on there and not over doing too much pressure, then you can actually do that. Now you see, so I've got like this little bit of a curve that I'm working in right now. You can see that. As I do that, I kind of I go down, and now I'm gonna start working back up. It's kind of hard to use a knife across a curve. So, I'm just gonna peel this. Sometimes I get a little more flesh than I intended, but that's okay. That's part of the reason why, as I said, I grabbed a slightly bigger piece than just an inch, because I knew I was probably gonna lose a little bit more, just because of the shape of it. Okay, a little bit more. You see, I'm getting to those little knobbies and they're kind of awkward and I'm trying to peel around them, but we'll see how good of a job I do. If any of you out there watching this have a much better technique for peeling um, ginger, I would love to hear it, please share. Okay, so you see how now at this point I'm not just peeling, I'm actually using this kind of motion of the knife like that to help get some of that skin loose between these little weird bumpy things, these little knobs. Almost there. So close. Okay. All right. There we go. Got that. So now that it's been peeled, I could, if I wanted to dice it, I could do a lot of different things. But what I want to do is grate it. So I have my handy dandy grater here, which as you can see has all kinds of different styles of tongs on it or teeth. I don't know what to call these things. And what I'm gonna use this time is I'm gonna use these small teeth. So these are the big ones that a lot of times we'll use for like grating cheddar cheese and all that other jazz. I'm gonna use these slightly smaller ones here. I don't wanna use these which create more of a zest because that's a little bit too fine. I wanna use this one. So I'm gonna be careful though because these teeth are exceptionally sharp. So I wanna make sure to use enough force to get the ginger to actually uh, shred or grate without like slipping and then getting my knuckle because that's not pleasant. So just use a little bit. And when you do this, when you use a grater like this, you'll find that you always have like a little nub at the end that you just cannot get close enough without risk of uh, tearing your fingers to shreds. So, you know, you just kinda have to throw it a little bit away, which again, is part of the reason why, even though the recipe might call for an inch long piece, I grab a piece that's a little bit longer to give me that, um, that little bit of leeway at the end. So I'm getting close to that point where I'm gonna start to feel a little uncomfortable and a little worried that I might actually grate my fingers in here. And as I get closer to that point, I do get a little bit more careful and I kinda move it around and I think we're done, which actually wasn't so bad. That's not a whole lot wasted. So throw that away and then put my hand on the inside and pull it forward. Be gentle, get these other little pieces off. 
and there we go. That's grated ginger. So we're gonna use this in a, in a lot of different dishes. You can do this instead of dicing small sometimes if you'd rather. Um, it makes for a little bit more of an even, um, an even kind of consistency. But uh, yeah, so, all right, that's it.